I really did regret getting this tattoo of Queen Elizabeth on my arm. And on this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I did end up getting this tattoo, what it means, and what her tattoos mean on her face and body, because she's got tattoos on this tattoo as well. But first, I wanna tell you about a little story when I went to Buckingham Palace and I actually met the Queen, because what happened there was pretty funny and crazy, and it's a unforgettable experience, which I can't really believe happened. And this is my second YouTube channel, Tony Jeffries Extra, where I upload different sort of videos. So make sure you subscribe for more videos from me. 2008, after the Olympic Games, I got a letter from the Queen, signed, obviously she didn't write it or probably sign it, but I got a letter inviting me to Buckingham Palace to meet her Majesty. And I couldn't believe it. A lad from Sunderland getting invited to go to, you know, the most famous palace in the world. So it was pretty exciting. And before I went to meet the Queen with all the other Olympians from the 2008 Games, we were on an open top bus traveling through London, waving to people and all that. It was a bit surreal to say the least. Then after that, it was time to go to Buckingham Palace. But first we had to go and get our Olympic Team GB suits on. So I went back to James De Gilles house, who was Olympic gold medalist, where I was staying and where my suit was before we headed off to Buckingham Palace. And us being us, we were pretty late to get there. And we missed the kind of briefing, if you like, about the rules and regulations, what you should and shouldn't do. And I remember, you know, we got in there and it was a big rush, like, come on boys, you're, you're late, get in. And when we got inside of Buckingham Palace, which was beautiful, by the way, chandeliers the size of my house, I finally got into the room where all the Olympians were. And you could see that, that everyone was standing like in a kind of a semi-circle. And I was with the bronze medalists, James went with the gold medalists, and someone rushed me on and I was on the end of the semicircle. Because we missed the briefing, I didn't know that, you know, you're not supposed to ask the Queen questions. You know, if she talks to you, then yeah, you talk back, but don't, you know, come out with questions. Anyway, so the Queen's on the bronze medalist semicircle and she's walking around shaking people's hands. She had some leather gloves on, which I thought was a bit strange, but at the same time, you know, she was old and she was about to shake hundreds of people's hands. Yeah, keep your gloves on. So she got round to me and she shook my hand and she went, oh, so what sport did you do? And my response was, can you tell by me nose? And she looked a bit like, uh, startled. And she went, oh, no, I went, I did boxing. Did you watch much of the Olympics? And she said, yeah, I did. I watched equestrian, is it called? The horse ride? No. Oh, nice. Did, did you enjoy it? And at this point, she must have been thinking, this boxer is, is crazy. And she just like nodded and like kindly walked away. So I was like, whoa, that, that, was, that was an interesting little interaction I had with the Queen. At the time I wrote a blog for a big newspaper up in the northeast of England and I wrote in the blog about my experience with the Queen. Well, that was it. A lot of press picked this up, this story up and you know, the headline was, Tony doesn't play by the Queensberry rules. What a smart headline that is. Coming back from the Olympics in 2008 with a medal, it was absolutely life-changing. There was lots of crazy things happening. Getting invited to events on TV shows, going to meet the Queen, and it was kind of starting to feel a little bit normal. Now I'm out of it, and it's years later, I look back, I'm like, wow, how mad was that? So my meeting of the Queen didn't have anything to do with me getting this tattoo. I moved to America in 2012, and I always wanted to get like a half sleeve on my arm. And I'm just thinking, what's, what should I get on my arm? And I wanted to get some things to show the Americans. I was just sure that, you know, I was British and something for my British heritage. So I had a few things planned. I wanted to get the queen, the flag. I wanted to get a pension monument. It's where I'm from in Sunderland. I wanted to get some other little things. And I had a big plan of things to get all around my arm and kind of blended together. And I went to the artist and I showed him the plan and he was like, mm, if you wanna get the queen's head, you need to get it big on your arm so I can make it look really good and really detailed. And I was like, oh, I, I don't want the queen's head on my arm that big. And he was like, no, it would be great. And then we'll get the flag behind. And I wanted the flag black and white. He was like, you should get the flag in color. It'll look great, the big queen's head in color. He said, yeah, let's get the tattoo big and then you can maybe put some little things on the queen to, for your other things that you wanted on there. Like I've got on here 106 on the Queen's neck, it's a tattoo, and that's how many fights I had. I've got on here B&B, &B, which is Box and Burn, which is a gym I own. And I've got on here like Sol, it's a tattoo above a high eyebrow. That's something, you know, that's special with me and me wife. And then Los Angeles there, which another thing is like, you know, I lived in LA. And also across the top here, I've got a quote, Fortune Favors the Brave, which is a fantastic quote because 
It really does. You've got to be brave if you want to be fortunate in anything you do in life. So that's what all of these little tattoos are on her. They are, they've got all meaning to me. And I was like, should I? Should, should I not? And I'm at this supposedly top tattoo artist and I'm kind of trusting what he says. And then I messaged my friend Kerry Christie who's got tattoos all over her. And I'm like, Kez, he's telling me I should get a big. And she said, yeah, just trust him. He's a top tattoo artist, trust him. It'll be right whatever he's saying. So I'm like, all right, then I'll trust him. So then he puts it on and he starts doing the queen and I'm like, this is really, really big. And then after he does the flag and colors it in, I'm like, wow, this is a bit too much. And I'm like, do I really want it? It looks very tacky on me arm. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe it's okay. So after the sitting, it was like eight hours or whatever it took. And then I went home and I showed my wife and I was like, so Sarah, look at this. And I, and I showed him the title and she was like, what have you done? And I'm like, oh. It's bad, it's very bad. She was like, it's laughing. She's like, what, what, what have you done? And I was like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But it's on for life. And from that moment there, I was like, oh, I wish I never got this tattoo. And then I was getting a bit embarrassed about it. I'd be walking around the streets and four people would be like staring and it's a big, bright, shiny tattoo with the queen's head with colors all around. And then when I was showing people this tattoo, they were like, oh, all right. And I was, wasn't getting, it's good off of hardly anyone and I was getting so paranoid thinking I've made the biggest mistake and trying to think of ways and how I can you know get rid of the tattoo I was thinking of ways of kind of color the the color in to get a black to make it not stand out as much and it was a tough thing for about six to eight months and my wife kind of knew that it was tough and she was like Tony you know what you've got to do you've just got to own own it own it and when she said that something changed in my mind I was like yeah I do let's be proud and let's show it off and you know don't give a what anyone else says and yeah I'm gonna own it so I start doing them start wearing more vests start shooting videos and kind of not being afraid to show it anymore and really owning it and being proud of what it is which is it's the queen of my country and the flags and all that and then I start noticing the good things people were seeing because when I was thinking negatively towards it I noticed the, the negative things but when I start thinking positively about it then I start seeing positive reactions from it and I'm walking through the streets now and people's looking at it and they're like, wow, that's amazing. Can I take a picture of it? And people's taking pictures of it. I was like, wow, maybe the tattoo isn't that bad after all. And now having the tattoo for like eight years and having a big YouTube channel where I've got it out all the time, some people recognize me through the tattoo. Like I was in Koh Samui last week and some guy stopped me his corner. He said, oh, I thought it was you. I recognized you from your tattoo. I don't love it, but I own it and I'm happy that it's on my arm. And now I've started to build tattoos around. I've got this ship from the shipyards in Sunderland. I got my mom, I got the kids, I got lots more tattoos around it and kind of getting addicted to getting tattoos. And I don't know where these tattoos will end, but I enjoy getting them. Do you? Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more extra videos from me.